Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this video is titled A Bad Day in the Airso Circuit, Blue Angel Number 4 Punches Out on the Deck, or, as quoted by the lady who was standing next to me during this air show, I bet they do that as part of the show. Now, back in the 70s, when I was contemplating being a military pilot, the uh, Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds both uh, were flying the F 4. And the F 4 was just a beautifully impressive aircraft. I just fell in love with that aircraft. And the pilots that fly these aircraft, they're very carefully chosen. These guys are the best of the best, and they're good. You don't get to be a Blue Angel or a Thunderbird by being anything but the best. But there's a lesson for anybody on the continuum of I'm a fantastic pilot down to I'm a beginner, and everybody should fit somewhere on that continuum, that even if you are very good, you can make a simple mistake that has very significant consequences. Now, the Thunderbirds were also flying the F-4 at the same time. And both of these teams, both the Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds, put on an excellent show. Now, if you ask me who put on the better show, well, being an Air Force pilot, I would have to plead the fifth on that. Now, in my opinion, the F-4 is a challenging aircraft to fly, and I don't think many people will disagree with that. And this opinion is based on my vast experience in the F-4. Well, okay, guys, I'm talking about 10 hours here. 10 total hours split between the CD and the E models, and this occurred out at Edwards uh, in flight test type of activities. I like to say I have a lot of time in a few aircraft and a little bit of time in a lot of aircraft. Now, I also have time in a Blue Angel F-18. That, that's me standing there. Now, you may say that's, that's not a Blue Angel paint job, and you're right. What happens when the Blue Angels kind of tire out their um, F-18s? Um, they uh, hand them on over to NASA. And this is out at uh, NASA Dryden at the time. It's now at NASA uh, Armstrong. But I was, uh, I remember Society of Experimental uh, Test Pilots. And uh, I was one of the three paper judges at the uh, National Symposium. And the guy next to me was a, a NASA test pilot I knew. And he says, have you ever flown the F-18? And I go, no, I haven't. He says. Would you like to? And I go, yes. And he says, ah, we'll put together a test mission. Have you come up and fly it? So I got to fly it. So I got a little bit of an hour, uh, a little bit over an hour in an F-18. And I must say, this is one of the most beautifully handling aircraft that I'd ever flown. But back to the story. Now, here's the situation. As you can see, this isn't, uh, this isn't the way you like to see an F-4. Now, let me read you the official uh, transcript, supposedly, the spin, the official spin of what happened. August 30th, 1970, U.S. Navy Blue Angel pilot Lieutenant Ernie Christensen belly landed his F-4J Phantom at the Eastern I Iowa Airport in Cedar Rapids, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, with one engine stuck in afterburner during an air show at the airport. He ejected safely uh, while the aircraft ran off the runway. Well, there's quite a bit of that, it's true, but there's uh, there's one big uh, glaring error there. So let's get to the story here. All right. So this is the Cedar Rapids, Iowa airport. And the show operated off the long runway, runway 27. And the blue arrow points to the touchdown point on runway 27. And I, uh, with a group, was on with a lot of people actually, was on the other side of the runway, uh, abeam the touchdown point. Now, let's talk a little bit about the F-4. All right, this is the front seat cockpit of the F-4. And you see the gear handle, and you see the gear indicator lights there. Wait a minute, you're going, what gear indicator lights? Okay, here's close up. Yeah, McDonnell Douglas didn't do pilots any favor on this. You notice the uh, the Big gear handle. I mean, there's a manly gear handle, right? And it's got a red knob. Well, most of the time you put a white knob with a red light in it because if the sun hits the knob, the knob comes on red and you think you've got a problem and it can be, uh, you know, to the point where you go, well, if I see red in the handle, yeah, maybe it's not a serious 
situation. It's just uh, the sunlight. But now you look at the gear indicators. Well, these aren't lights. They're little hash things that come down, and that's your indication that the gear is down. It's a, it's a mechanical system, very reliable. You don't have any bulbs to burn out, but uh, where it's tucked here, it doesn't really grab your attention. Now here's a more conventional gear system. You've got lights, you've got green lights for the gear, you've got an in-transit light. And here's a picture of the cockpit of my uh, Turbo 310R, my Cessna Turbo 310R. And the gear lights are down here in the center, right next to the itty-bitty gear handle there. I've got a, uh, a red um, unlock light that's appropriately off, and i got the three green lights. I've got nice lights that shine in your face and kind of get your attention. A little bit better than this setup. You know, but I guess if you if you fly it a lot, you're used to it. But it's it's not, you know, it's not a glaring lack of a third light or lack of any lights that gets your attention. Now the air show was coming to an end. They had they had done all the performances, and as usual, it was a spectacular show. The uh, Blue Angels were coming down initial here into their typical you know pitch up, and coming around. Uh, on uh, inside down when getting ready to come around the final turn. While that was happening, the uh, two ship comes by in this slightly uh, non conventional two ship wing landing uh, scenario here. And uh, the narrator is talking about, you know, this situation. And he's not really paying too close attention to what uh, the guys are doing landing. And I was told that uh, the narrator has a switch on his mic between the PA that all of us hear, and the UHF radios in the Phantoms so we can talk to the pilots. And I noticed Ernie was coming around, and he was the only guy without his gear down, which seemed a little bit unusual, but I thought, oh, maybe he's going to do a high-speed pass or something. And just as he is about to touch down, over the PA comes Ernie Gear. Well, then I think uh, the narrator probably realized what he had done and switched, but the Blue Angel came down, and of course he had a very significant flight path vector directed right towards the concrete, and he probably was attempting to do a go-around, because the aircraft came, slammed down, and I'm going, oh, this doesn't look good. And I'm looking up the tailpipes, and I see a whole line of flames underneath the wing where this 12 or so layers of paint is burning nicely and I see both afterburners light. Okay, well, I'm thinking those are very powerful engines, the J79s, but I don't think they can overcome the coefficient of friction of paint against concrete. So the burners light for just a little bit and then they, they go dark. He pulls it out of burner apparently because both engines come out of afterburner. They both went dark. Mm, there wasn't one stuck in afterburner. No, they both went dark. And looking down the runway, and he starts to slide to the left. Now, there were a group of guys out there with a pickup that were picking up the uh, drogue chutes that the guy deploy, the guys deploy to slow him down. Oh, by the way, Ernie did deploy the drogue chute, and it promptly caught on fire and then did a nice spinning nutation as the one side that was burning kind of spun around. But this whole aircraft starts to slide towards the uh, guy standing on the side of the runway and you can see these guys start running like hell and it looks like the airplane is going to go off the runway and it, it did just a little bit because when i saw it later there were corn stalks up the intake of the engine but just as it was starting to go off the uh, side of the runway Ernie punches out now first comes the canopy and it just glints end over end in the sunlight it was you know, if anything could be described as beautiful, that was. But to see the canopy go up, and then up he comes under the seat, and he separates, the parachute uh, comes out, and he comes down and, and lands uh, near the airplane that has now gone off the side of the runway, and of course the fire trucks are all uh, going out there to assist. Well, the Blue Angels pull up in front of what was the old terminal at Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Of course, that whole airport has been redone, but... 
at the old terminal, they pull up in front and you know how the Blue Angels, you know, this is, this is not a good day. You know, this is not the kind of day you want to have as, as lead. So they get out of the aircraft. It's not really a smart, uh, you know, military type walking to the front. They just kind of saunder in front of their aircrafts. The narrator is uh, going on about the Martin ejection seat, ejection seat and how it saves so many lives, which is true, of course. It's a very good ejection seat, except it can be very bad on your back if you have to use it. But it does get you out of the aircraft. And he's talking about the se- success rate of it. And then he says, and this was a beautiful quote, and then he says, the surviving Blue Angels will be available to sign autographs. And Lee just shakes his head. He goes like that. They just turn and walk off. Not a good way to end the air show. Well, this was at the time when I was looking at becoming a military pilot. And I was looking at the Navy and I was looking at the Air Force. So I found out a few of these details when uh, just a few weeks later, I went up to take a uh, Navy flight officer physical at um, uh, the Glenview Naval Air Station. And I'm going up there, and, and of course, all of us knew about this. We, uh, it was a group from Iowa City, and uh, we were able to corner some people and, and, and find the true story, uh, as I have uh, related to you here. Um, as I said, I ended up going into the Air Force. Now, when I took the Navy physical, I have a bit of a crossbite, and they said I only had eight serviceable teeth. That's okay. You only need eight serviceable teeth. But if I lost one of my serviceable teeth, I could be in trouble. And I'm thinking, you know, if it comes down to biting people, I'm not sure if this is the service I want to be in because the Air Force really didn't care about my my teeth at all. But anyway, that's the story of Ernie, how just a simple, you know, the old saying, there are pilots who have landed gear up and there are pilots who will, but this simple mistake in front of probably 40,000 people is, is just not the way uh, to end your Blue Angel career. Anyway, thanks for watching.